Welcome to the She Is podcast by Refuge City Church. We are here to have a Bible-based conversation about who you are in Christ. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Hello and welcome, as you heard, to the She Is podcast. Today, super exciting stuff happening. Like, we're all so jazzed about today's share. (laughs) Or as we would say in interview, we have a very special guest with us today. Tanya Weaver. Yay! Most of you don't know who she is, so (laughs) you get to learn today who she is. Yay! So, we thank you for joining us. You 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 don't have to stay silent. I don't know what to say. She's like, I don't know. (laughs) Especially when I say stuff, most people don't know what to say. It's okay. Uh, So, that's the plan for today, but before we jump into kind of interviewing and questions, we have some funsies to do. We do have funsies. Yay. Well, we're, we're going to need a little warm up with Tanya. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so what we're going to do is we're actually going to ask you some fun questions. So we have, well, we, okay, later on, we'll be asking you some like ministry related questions, but we thought it'd be fun to hear something else from you too. So, um, so yes. So Tanya is actually my sister-in-law. Uh, she's been in my life for like Eight, have you been married 18 years? Almost. Almost 18 years. But so I met you like 18 yes. years ago. Okay. <laughs> Part of the family for a long time. So, and she is on leave right now. She's visiting us from Africa, from Mozambique. Ooh. So uh, she gets to, <laughs> she gets to uh, hang out with the family for a couple months before heading back overseas. And, and uh, we'll hear some more about her ministry in a little bit, but yeah, that's a little bit about who she is. So. But let's get to know you a little bit better, Tanya. Eh? Hey. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll kick it off. So my question for you is, what is something that you disliked as a child that you enjoy now or vice versa? So something you liked as a child that you don't like now. Either one of those. It's an easy question. <laughs> um, one of the things that I hated as a kid was reading. Hey. Um, mm-hmm. I was just... Oh. Like always behind in school and I didn't do well. And it was always like the competition where you have to read a certain amount of books and then you get the stars on the chart and like pizza, right? I never, ever got that. And so (laughs) I just didn't like read. And now it's one of my favorite things. I spend a lot of time reading. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Do you got a favorite book recommendation? Oh, I don't have a recommendation, but I like books that will teach me something. Um, I don't really just spend time reading like novels just for the, like to lose myself in them. I like to spend my time reading something that's going to educate me or equip me in ministry more. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. Very nice. Very nice. I remembered my question. Oh, do you want to ask yourself? No, it's your turn. All right. I'm curious to know, what is the best thing that you've eaten in Africa? And what is the worst thing that you've eaten in Africa? So (laughs) they have these things there. This is really weird because it's really not something that I don't think, I don't think I can explain it. But one of my favorite kind of weird things, but I really like it. They call them bijias. And it's like... If you see them making them, you'll be grossed out by it. Uh, but it's like beans mushed up with like a, like a flour, kind of like pancake dough a little bit, but a little bit harder. And they like mush them up and squish them and then deep fry them. Ooh. And you take them and you put them in bread with like a habanero salsa. Mm. So it's one of the better things. I usually, they're very mm. cheap. They're like one met a Bajia, which is, I don't know how to calculate that into dollars. <laughs> so for a dollar, I can get 63 of them. Whoa, I can do oh that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'll like put an order in with the lady across and, and they do it like in the open road, like they're cooking them out in the yeah. street. Right. And so I'll go in the morning and like order like 200 of them Yeah. and then put them in my air fryer if I want to make them crispy. Um, wow. Mm. Yeah, I like that. And so I thankfully haven't had to eat anything weird (laughs) over there. Um, I I don't know what to say on like a gross thing Mm. because I've really been lucky to not be with Eric. Yeah, maybe you can share some of these. Eric Eric has heard a couple stories of Eric and others who have gone. Yeah, he is not afraid to eat anything that's put in front of him. So he's had rats and he's had like 
goat hooves and goat guts and guts Whoa. of many sorts. Um, <laughs> and it's gross. And wow. thankfully, I haven't ever been, like, the one time I was served goat gut, <laughs> it was actually in my own yard for a wedding, and I just didn't eat it because I was, like, hosting the wedding, and so I didn't have to. Because, so. yeah, I've heard, like, if somebody offers you something, it's very disrespectful yeah. to not so eat it, or is that... It's not so, mu- it's not so much that way in Mozambique, <clears throat> oh, okay. um, but I think also because we know, like, we've been there for a long time. We've been mm. there for 10 years. This year's our 10-year anniversary there. Oh. Um, that I can just be like, ah. No, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. Yeah. Like, even if they were, like, adamant, like, you have to. I would struggle. <laughs> I don't think I could. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> no, gross. <laughs> uh, my question was, um, what is the funnest thing that you've gotten to do there different than the funnest thing you get to do when you come home? Um... There's a lot of fun things. So in the beginning, when we first moved there, we didn't really do a lot of stuff outside of ministry. Uh, We didn't really know, like, the country very well. Mm -hmm. Um, Traveling was a little bit harder, like, just financially or whatever. Um, The kids were a lot younger also. Mm -hmm. And so over the last probably five years, we've done a lot of really amazing things over there. And so... Highlights are like Eric has started hunting over there. Mm. And so he'll go out hunting and then I'll go to the hunting camp and they have like a big like canvas military type big tent that's like with a real bed and has like running water and (laughs) everything. It's like glampy, glampy. Um, And then like we stay in like the echo side. So one side they cater for like all the rich, fancy hunters that come in and like Huh? spend a ton of money and then there's like the echo camp that you can go and they provide a cook for you so you just have to bring all of your own stuff oh. and it just like overlooks this big watering hole so all day long like when he is out doing stuff I just will sit on the porch of my tent house with my binoculars <laughs> and like you know there's like baboons that come in oh. and uh, wow. warthogs and impalas and like bush bucks and all of these like African Personal type safari. animals. That, yeah. Yeah. And then when we go for drives, we usually see lions. And last time we were there, we saw elephants really close wow. and kind of scary, but that, and then deep sea fishing is something that oh. we've done a couple times there. Um, yeah. That is really fun. And so, so cool. good. Yeah. That's- I guess my question would be any crazy or funny stories like traveling to and from the bush or to different cities Mm. that you minister in? (laughs) I have a lot of good stories, but I don't think that I'm going to share them on a podcast. Um, Oh, man. Yeah, I think that there's just personal stuff that you Mm. just don't share publicly. Um, (laughs) Any wheels that have fallen off the vehicle at times? Uh, No, we did last time, uh, like a week before we came, we were driving, and the car coming towards us lost a a wheel. Oh, Oh, no. And it was, like, you know, bouncing in the street in front of us and, like, Mm -hmm. crossed right in front of us and into the bush, and we're like, what the heck? And then the trailer was was like dragging on the side behind oh me goodness. watching us. Um, I don't know. I I don't have like a specific thing, but like we travel a lot and so there's a lot of breaking down. I will tell you something <laughs> funny. Okay. So th- just this last I, I don't know if you guys saw it on any of my stories, but we went Probably. to South Africa in July. We drove down oh, there. Mm-hmm. It's 24, 21 hour drive down to South Africa. And so the roads are garbage for most of it and we decided that when you type in google like where we were to home there's this road that always comes up (laughs) and we're like it's the main road it like says you can take this way or an alternative route and so it's got to be a road and so we stopped at a gas station (laughs) and asked somebody have you ever been on this road? They're like, yeah, it's a great road. Like, don't... And then he's like, don't be surprised. Like, the bridge is a little bit washed out. Just keep to the right. Like, it kind of... Like, it's a farming road. So... And we're like, okay, whatever. We're thinking it's going to cut down time. Yeah. (laughs) We drove for four hours and didn't see life at all. Like, (laughs) no houses. Oh, my god. Nothing. And it was, like, grass as tall as a car. 
and like a foot, like a bicycle path. Like Whoa. that was the road. And oh we goodness. drove through a river and we drove over a broken bridge and like, I'm just like, this is what I'm like recording house? everything. This is just, of course. And Eric's like, I'm never listening to anybody again. <laughs> this is not even a thing. Like what is happening? And so finally, I think the funniest part was we drive past this woman with like this huge thing full of stuff on her head with this little boy. Uh. And I'm like staring at her through the window and she's staring at me through the window. <laughs> Like, how did you find this road? <laughs> and I'm like, how long have you been walking? <laughs> I've been driving for four hours, and, like, I driving. Like, this woman had to have been walking for days out there. Yeah. So, like, wow. a week later, we're at the dentist. Be like, and the dentist get off that road? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, where are you going? And, um, the dentist is asking, like, how was South Africa? And I'm like, oh, we took this road. And he's like, oh. The road that Google says? <laughs> like, yeah, he's like, yeah, I took that road a couple of years ago. And there was, like, tire marks. And so I thought for sure, like, this is a decent road. It has to be. But he's seeing all the same stuff we're seeing, which is, like, mm-hmm. a lot of grass, a lot of nothing. And he's like, I just figured, like, these fresh tire prints must mean that this <laughs> is a pretty common road. And then he catches up to a donkey <laughs> holding a cart <laughs> with a man on it. And he's like, never took that road again. Oh we God. are never going to take the road again. But it was just, I'm just like, just another oh. day. Like, it's another thing. And of course, why wouldn't this be what road we're on? Because that kind of stuff happens all the time. All the time. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Yeah. Okay, well. Sounds like we need prayer after that. (laughs) I'm sure you prayed a lot during that journey. So we'll pray right now. Lord, we just thank you and praise you. Thank you, Lord, for Tanya and her family. Thank you for what you have called them to. Lord, we pray that that we ourselves and our listeners learn to listen to your voice and follow your path. When you say go, you go, and you don't question. You just go wherever he is led. There's always blessing and favor there. And so, Lord, we just thank you for today and um, the tenderness that will be shared. Lord, we thank you that um, what is spoken here today will will actually be fruit for our souls and our, our lives to help us to grow and get to know Tanya and those others that are doing your work um, away from home and away from their families. And so, Lord, bless them all. And uh, thank you for today and this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Well, I guess, uh, I guess I'll guess i start it off <laughs> with, our, with our other questions. Um, so Tanya and I were actually talking a couple weeks ago when you came back home. And I think this is what we were talking about. I'm like, I remember wanting to ask you. I'm like... Why well, I was like Tanya, can you share that on the podcast? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> well, now you are. If you <laughs> ask it, then I'll share it. But I don't know how to start. <laughs> yeah. well, I'll start it. Well, it's, so we, we're kind of we're jumping right in with yep. both feet right now. Okay, um, so we were talking about um, deliverance and what that looks like um, in your world, mm-hmm. um, and so we it's kind of something that we're. I don't know. It's obviously there, it's at work here in the states, but we just see it differently. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel, yeah, Tanya was basically telling me about her front row seat for a lot of um, a lot of experiences with um, with the demonic in people. And mm-hmm. so I wanted to ask. She was sharing a little bit, and I just kind of want to prod for her to share here um, what what that experience is like for you. Um, because you you mentioned that it happens a lot in the middle of church services, and um, and that you have also noticed a lot of the same types of um, things that seem to be like root causes for 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 the demonic to have a stronghold in people's lives. And yeah, we were just talking about people getting set free from that, or sometimes not getting set free from that. So, sorry, my my question is, <laughs> what does deliverance ministry look like for you? And what common roots for strongholds have you noticed? All right. Um, So we all know that each one of us is called to set people free. Um, We each have authority to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll just give a little background. Like I personally love, um, I love deliverance ministry. Um, I used to have like a kind of sour taste in my mouth for like, 
the word inner healing ministry because I have had weird experiences. Um, But for me, I believe that deliverance and inner healing are this, like they go hand in hand. Um, You can't really have, I mean, you can have one radical deliverance without, but it really is an inner and outer like working. Mm -hmm. Um, And so over there, I, like Jamie was saying, there's manifestations all the time. It's a very common thing in almost every church service that I go to, something happens. Um, But in my own, like, I'll hit on that, but in my own personal, like, just being there and seeing things, um, I really feel like the hindrances to a lot of the growth in the churches that we're searching for is because of demonic strongholds because Mm -hmm. people are not like it's like how come you're not getting what we're teaching after 10 years of teaching you Mm -hmm. there's got to be something that's like Mm -hmm. literally blocking you from understanding how to Mm -hmm. be fruitful um and so i have my own life gone through a lot of like deliverance and inner healing just with the lord one-on-one of like asking the why why is this happening or why am i acting like this and really wanting to know and like him being really faithful to like setting me free and learning how to renew my mind and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Um, and so I believe that, that, that is something deliverance, like as a structured thing, not so much like we're going to sit down and do an interview one-on-one deliverance, but just teaching people how the demonic functions, Mm -hmm. um, how, you know, how are they coming in? What does it look like when you have something manifesting in your life as a fruit Right. Or a right. manifestation, not just right. the falling on the floor and like writhing manifestations, but day to day manifestations of a stronghold in your life. Yeah. Um, and so I started teaching um, like intensives or like three day seminar type things of just the basic, like this is what it looks like. Da, da, da. And then I have seen a lot of people receive like freedom through just truth because truth sets you free. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. That is a huge passion of mine. Within the churches, it is very common for us to be in a church service, whether Eric or me are sharing or we're just in a service with usually a minister that is living a pure life because not all pastors over there are. And so when you are moving in this (laughs) devil's kingdom, I don't want to be mean, then a lot of the time, like, why would a de- why would a demon leave? Because mm-hmm. they're not gonna mm-hmm. they're not in harm, you know. Right. And so, I just remember like the kids, like they know, like from when mm-hmm. we first got there when they were little until now, like there's a certain shift in the service. Like you gather your stuff, you put your coloring things in your backpack, you zip it oh. up because things are about to get really rowdy. Um, I don't know if you guys remember like the Abercrombie girl. I do. On the Father of Light like, or mm-hmm. Furious Love movies. Mm-hmm. Do you mm-hmm. remember? I think so. Uh, That's yeah, I don't like, know. I remember watching that like way back in the day mm-hmm. and it was like this, you know, African girl like, wow, and they're carrying her and I'm like, oh, oh my yeah. gosh, that's crazy. Like, that's how it is. Mm. Um, <laughs> like you can, you can, there's a certain sound that I've learned of like that oh. person's about to to go go down or that person like that like one thing that I've it's interesting is like there's like a tongue that you hear oh that like sounds like tongues but it's not tongues and like usually always when you hear it like if you lay your hands on that person and you start to pray they'll manifest Mm. in some certain way Mm -hmm. um it's usually in all of the time that I've been there I've only prayed for one male that actually was manifesting a demon, um, which I find interesting because why? I mean, right. obviously the demonic <laughs> right. works in both genders, right? Um, but I have, I don't know. I, I don't have that revelation of like what's going on in the spirit and why. I don't know if it's just in general, like women manifest problems with like mental health more than men do and mm. stuff. I don't know if it's just mm. the way that we process stuff that we're more vulnerable. So maybe mm. they, that might be it. I have no idea. Um, but the major strongholds in the demonic there is like, of course, witchcraft, um, divination. And so it's 
rooted into the culture as just something completely normal. Mm -hmm. Um, The witch doctors are actually recognized by the state, like the country's health department, as an actual health, like, option. Um, And so... Yeah, it's like a, if you don't get your help from the church or from the doctor, you would go to the witch doctor. Or you don't get it from the doctor or the church, you would go to the, you know. And so it's just like another option, mm. even though people know it's not, like the church knows it's not okay. Um, it's a very common thing. And so mm-hmm. when we're dealing with deliverance, the there's so much. They're all like inner twangled (laughs) I'll use that word Um, it's a good word you know if you have fear like if you have a spirit of fear that's manifesting in your life then because of fear of man like you may begin to lie Mm. and so you can open something for like a lying spirit to come in and because of you know that or whatever like I'm prideful and I don't want anybody to know this and so it's just kind of like a continual web of the way that Mm. the enemy just like roots inside of you um but usually, like, like witchcraft, and then that's usually, like, the biggest open door, which I think in general, what does it say in the Bible? Um, rebellion and mm-hmm. something is, like, the sin of witchcraft. I don't know exactly mm-hmm. the scripture. But it's, it's all rooted in mm-hmm. not focusing on Jesus and trying to go somewhere else to get, like, your source of anything. Mm-hmm. Um, lying stuff. Lying is really, really big over there fear is really really and I say that but like the devil works the same way Mm -hmm. everywhere and so I think the difference is like between what I'm seeing over there and what I'm seeing over here um the tactics are the same across the board whether I'm in Mozambique or I'm in Klamath Falls um well then why are you seeing all of these manifestations there but you're not seeing them here the devil is the same everywhere Mm -hmm. um I think the difference, this is kind of a different question, but I think the difference is you won't find a single person in Mozambique that doesn't believe in God or the devil um, at all. Like on a normal conversation, if you were to have somebody walk up to you and they were having a struggle in their life, they would say that it's demonic. There's Mm -hmm. like the devil's doing this. Um, And so there's like an awareness of, especially the demonic. So I don't want to say the spirit realm in general because there's a real lacking of the understanding of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, If somebody (laughs) manifests anything Holy Spirit, it's always considered demonic because they don't know how to discern spirits either Um, because they're so used to the demonic. Mm -hmm. And so I think here, like, we have such a culture of, like, agnostic or just Mm -hmm. I don't believe in God in general like an atheist Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that the enemy doesn't manifest as much here because a hidden God can be a hidden demon Mm -hmm. like if that makes sense Um, I don't I answered partially some of no that was great (laughs) that was really really good good. wouldn't it yeah just open it up and and hear your heart on that so I think that goes kind of probably for all of us with Mm -hmm. our questions is Mm -hmm. um I mean we don't know the we're not asking because we're asking the questions because we don't know the answers (laughs) and so if you uh are feeling like your answer is actually or what what we what we are really asking for what we're really needing to hear you just go for it yeah, that, yeah, yeah, and yeah. of course, any additional <laughs> things you hear me say, I would love to clear them up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely, For sure. So, my question um, is: uh, in ministry, it can be easy to be doing the work, um, but forget like our main focus is Him, you know. And so, what does your quiet time look like with God, and how has that like changed and progressed over the years as you've been in Africa? Um, I think that. And I, I talk about this a lot with our missionaries that are coming in. Yeah. Um, also, like, it was actually a really huge shock to me when I left Klamath Falls and went over to Mozambique mm-hmm. because we were youth pastoring. Mm-hmm. We were on staff. Like, w- back then it was like we had Tuesday night youth group, Wednesday night <laughs> church, mm-hmm. Sunday yeah. morning, two services, Sunday night. Like, yeah. we were here all the time. Yep. Yeah. Um, And then when I moved to Mozambique, I was like, how do I even read my Bible by myself? Like, Mm -hmm. how have I been in church for this long? And like, I don't know how to like 
Mm. Study the word. Mm. Um, Because why would I? I mean, that sounds bad. You know what I mean? Because it's like I'm youth. Like, it's not that I didn't read my Bible, but it wasn't like. Right. It was like I got, I went to church. I'm going to church all the time. Um, And then even like, okay, now worship is like, I, what do I do? Like, they don't speak English over there. And so if we're hearing the word, like I'm hearing Eric read it out of the Bible to a church and it's being translated into another language. And so it was really like a a huge shock to me. Like, okay, how do I learn how to do this? Because Mm. I really don't know how. And I don't think that it's, I mean, I know it's not like the fault of any one person, but I think that a lot of people in church rely so much on the structure. Mm. I think you guys have probably Mm -hmm. seen that through COVID in the States. Absolutely. Um, when the structure's taken away, it's like either mm-hmm. you figure out how to root in, yeah, you've already mm-hmm. rooted in, or you fail, mm-hmm. like you just struggle. And so I was kind of at that point when we went over there. I'm like, okay, now it's like I'll pay that subscription for Apple Music so that I have every <laughs> song that I want to listen to right. to do a worship set on my phone or um, learning how to read the Bible. I love using... Um, the Blue Letter Bible. Yes. Love yep. it. So, like, yeah. my, my Bible is like, I'm like, <laughs> I know so much. But I love it. It's, like, my favorite tool. So if yeah. Yeah. the Blue Letter Study Bible, mm-hmm. like, they do it online, too. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really helped me a lot. Like, I love to, because sometimes you'll read the word and you're just mm-hmm. like, I don't really know what this is saying. And I know it's not good to rely on, like, a commentary or anything like that. But it certainly helps to, like, mm-hmm. yes. bring a better perspective because I'm not hearing it from, like, learning from somebody mm-hmm. else. It's all, like, between me and Jesus. And so yeah. it is finding time. Like, I'm not perfect. I think that people ebb and flow out of, like, their... Mm-hmm. Um, whatever it starts with a d the word i'm thinking of <laughs> devotions uh, discipline discipline thank you <laughs> determination <laughs> i find myself more and more cuz i speak only portuguese over there oh, yeah. right. that i don't right. remember a lot of like words um, but yeah so it's like what is that word oh, as <laughs> amanda would say words are hard yeah. <laughs> they are. Um, the discipline and so yeah. like i could certainly grow in it um because there is a lot, like when you're constantly pouring out, sometimes mm-hmm. it's like when I'm done with that, yeah. I don't really want to sit down and do this again. I just did it to mm-hmm. plan this Bible school or I just did this to plan this thing. And so it's really like learn. it's all the time learning. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have like a method or anything. Yeah. Um, I spend a lot of time at my desk and like I like to listen to stuff. I like to, you know, study the Bible and then listen to worship and just... I like Mm -hmm. to, I don't know, for me, it's like, okay, Jesus, where am I at? And like, what do you need to show me? And what does that look like? And a lot of Mm -hmm. questions I ask. And so it's a lot of conversation. And Mm -hmm. it's cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It doesn't make it, I think there's like a misunderstanding of like, oh, you're a missionary and you live in Africa and you're like super spiritual. And I bet you like, (laughs) you know, and it's like, I could just do nothing. I could go to Mozambique and like post pictures every couple days and nobody would ever know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so we're all the same people. <laughs> yeah, like right? whether I'm there or here, I'm not, yeah. I have the same struggles of like, okay, whoa, like my Bible's been sitting in the same spot for a little <laughs> while right there. I need to like, and I can really yeah. feel when I mm-hmm. am like not in a good place. Usually my attitude is <laughs> bad. And Eric's like, you should go read the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know. <laughs> so you would notice. I know. I like, There's okay. a key when he walks up yeah. and hands you the Bible, <laughs> smiles, and walks away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yep, in cool. there. Mm-hmm. So good. Well, and speaking of Amanda, uh, she is not here today. She doesn't feel well. She's, so she's home. But she had a question as well. Um, and it dovetailed off of Nicole. She said, I think that is something I want to know more about too, which you just spoke up. She said, but what are some big differences between ministry in the States versus where you are? Um, I was having this conversation with Eric last night because I'm like, which way does it go? And I think that like, again, there's another misunderstanding of like, oh, I bet it's so great. Like, 
Because you see, like, you see pictures that we post and you hear testimonies of, like, amazing miracles that we Mm -hmm. see. Like, Mm -hmm. it is true. We see a lot of amazing things. We experience a lot of amazing things. Um, And so there's kind of, like, oh, it's because, you know, like, the people will carry that negative. Like, oh, it's because the Western church is. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, people are people everywhere. Mm -hmm. And there are, like, problems all over the place. So don't think that just because something happens in Mozambique that's not happening or is it is happening here, you know, that it's glamorous over here and whatever. Um, it, the difficulties of ministering over there, I think that's what I'll talk on it compared to like here, mm-hmm. um, is like we're going into churches and we're ministering. So we're over several hundred churches, Eric and I, um, to disciple and lead and train and equip. Like, we don't pastor any churches. Uh, We really feel like, as a foreigner, they should be pastored by their own nationality. Um, And so we go in and we provide tools and trainings to the leadership of the churches um, because they seriously need it. Like, we have had to say, like, it, it isn't okay to have six wives, you know, like yeah. you've been in a pastoral position for, you know, 35 years and you have, and you have six wives, but you're not married to any of them, like mm. legally at all. And mm. so we're dealing with 90% of our pastors living in fornication all the time mm-hmm. uh, or leaders in general because of the culture. It's a very wicked, like perverse culture. Mm-hmm. Um So you would never experience that here, where if we were to come in to minister into leadership or church members, I know that there is living in compromise everywhere, Uh, but most God-loving, like Jesus-fearing Christian people in the Western cultures are following as bestly as they can to, like, the commandments. Um, So you can go in and and minister in a certain way where there's, like, this level of understanding of, like, um, righteousness and holiness and and education. Like, Mm -hmm. I can teach on something and you understand what I'm saying, even if maybe you haven't gone that deep or you've never heard that before or something, if it's some topic, where over there, like... It's like very basic. Like, mm-hmm. okay, for we're just gonna try to get you to understand who Jesus is today because mm-hmm. salvation in their mind comes from going to church. It doesn't come from oh. knowing Jesus. Oh. Um, and oh. from reading your Bible, which most people don't have a Bible, and most people don't know how to read. Mm-hmm. And so it's like if salvation comes from going to church and reading your Bible and fasting, Mm-hmm. Like, where's Jesus in that equation? And so yeah. ministry is very, very different over there because you don't have the education level that you have here. Um, you have to really, really teach basic again and again and again. Like I talked mm-hmm. about with the stronghold stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. why are we back at square one? Right. Um, you know, and so I think that both have, both sides have like their challenges and both sides mm-hmm. obviously have beautiful things inside mm-hmm. of them. Um But it is, like, I love to come home and, like, be here and be able to share, like, the deeper things. Like, I am not able to really do that over in Mozambique. Like, we have a lot of youth kids that we disciple that really have a passion to, like, go deeper and know Jesus. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain, like, limit of, you know, like, understanding. Like, I was teaching one day on compromise it wasn't compromise. It was uh, content and complacent. Mm-hmm. There's not even a word for complacent in their vocabulary. Like they couldn't oh. even think of one. Mm. And so I'm like translating it the way that it shows on Google Translate. And they're like, we don't know what that is. Oh. So like there's a lot of stuff where it's like, how do I teach this the best yeah. way that I can with the vocabulary that you know? Yeah. Because it's not like they're just not super educated. Um, mm. And hitting just basic foundation stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we're really like, Mm -hmm. okay, we're not going to hit our wives. We're not going to, like, we're going to get married. We're going to have one wife. We're going to, you know, like, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Basic stuff. Like, let's just make sure you understand like just the, the foundations of like what it looks like to follow Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very different than here. Golly. 
Which kind of, you've started speaking into what my question is, and that's the culture. So, I mean, clearly the Lord has called you there for a purpose, but how do you do that and not dishonor them in their culture? Because, I mean, part of the problem is the culture, Yeah. but you don't, I mean, you're not going there, I'm just going to eradicate all of this and you're going to be like yeah. American. I mean, basically, and you can't do that and you don't want to do that. I know your heart is not to do that. And so culturally, you must come face to face with a lot of things that, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to dive into that one. Nope, I'm not touching that one. How, how do you know that line? And I'm sure some days that's all the Lord saying yes or no, but, but for you, how do you go and honor them for who they are and still be able to speak truth and teach them about Jesus and his ways? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. And when we first went over there, um, I don't really feel like I was aware. I, I don't, I think mission missionaries in general, whether it's short term or long term, just you go as an American who has an amazing life, like whether you're the poorest person in America or mm -hmm. not, you're mm -hmm. far above the people that we're dealing with in Mozambique. Mm -hmm. um, and you go over there. I'm going to hit this culture thing in a few different ways, like okay. the church and then just the culture in general. Um, you know, like you'll see even posts on Facebook of like a kid with whatever, like – bad drinking water or something. It's like, well, tell me how, where to send money. Tell right. me, I'll, I'm going to go over there and I'll do this, this, and this, and this, and this. And so we carry kind of this, I don't think it's an air, like a known arrogance of like, I can save you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so when we first went, it wasn't like, Hey, I want to be like, we call it like white savior complex. Mm. It's a very well known like term because a lot oh. of missionaries going in are white into black culture and we stand out, but they know, like, you're white, you have money, oh, and you're hmm. here to help me, and you're here to give me stuff. Like, it's embedded in them. Oh. Like, most of those places have been colonized by white countries. Mm -hmm. So they have that understanding of this person has money, they've come here to help me, they've come here to give me things, they owe me something. So it, there's almost uh, even like a, there's an entitlement yeah. over there. Mm. And then also massively, like you need to be careful for them to not grow dependent on you. Oh, okay. Um, mm. So we've had to learn like all of that. I didn't know that when I went there. And mm. so you go and you see something where it's like $5. Like, heck yeah, let's get 10 of them. Right. You know, and it's like, no, like that actually is, that can really destroy a lot of stuff. Um, mm. We've seen a lot of really sad situations because of um, helping. I know that sounds bad. Well, mm. but it's got to be the right kind of help for them, not yeah. what in our mind, our So what mind. I've learned over time is like, if Jesus didn't touch on it in the Bible, then I shouldn't be preaching oh. it from the pulpit. So mm. like and a major example was you would go into a church and the women would be sitting in the dirt on the floor and the men would be in chairs on the other side of the church. And, mm -hmm. like, there were times for, like, three or four years that we didn't even know that, like, people were married in the church. I say married oh. loosely. That's, mm -hmm. they call each other married, so I'll just say married. <laughs> um, and they're not. Right. Um, just because you say you're married doesn't mean you're married. So, and then I'm like, I'm not sure. Like, what? Like, because there's yeah. such a divide between the gender of woman and man. Mm -hmm. They're with the kids on the floor. They're, the men are in the chairs. And so it was like... No, like, bring, let's bring in chairs. Like, we'll buy chairs for the women to sit in. And it's like, there finally came a point where we're like, we're just not even going to discuss that anymore because I believe that was probably how it was when Jesus walked the earth. Mm -hmm. That there was a distinction. Yeah. And, like, I do want to teach you, though, how to love your wife. Right. You know, like, because right. that's biblical. And mm -hmm. so it's bringing in, like, the kingdom culture. Mm -hmm. And if your culture is very much against this kingdom culture, then I'm going to hit that really hard. But mm -hmm. if it's just a part of your culture, that's not a part of my culture, but it's also not like against the Bible. Right. Then yeah. I can share my own thoughts with you about how like, this is what works in, you know, in our culture. Like my husband washes dishes because he loves me and he helps me. And it, 
like it means a lot to me where like in their culture like no like a man would never be caught dead doing that mm-hmm. because of the stigma in the culture like he would oh. be really really ridiculed ridiculed and so it's like i will the boys i'm discipling they'll see eric washing dishes They'll say stuff because it's way mm-hmm. against culture. Right. And we'll share, like, Eric's like, I love her. Like, why would, you know, and it's like, I don't know. One day maybe that will be something, but I'm not going to stand in front of a right. church and and mm. tell you you need to do something that is in my Western culture because I'm not there to colonize people. Right. right. Um, yeah, and so learning the culture is a really big, it's, I mean, we're still learning all the Mm -hmm. time but Mm -hmm. I feel like we have a really good grasp on like what the culture is now in Mm -hmm. Mozambique we know a lot of like the secret culture stuff like the secret Mm -hmm. like ritual stuff and things that Mm -hmm. are like really embedded deep in like witchcraft Mm -hmm. um and so we're able to like hit them like Mm -hmm. straight on um but we've been there long enough that people know it's like you're not a two-week person that's right. come in here to try to tell us what to do, and then you're right. going to leave tomorrow. Right. Um, and so we certainly don't shy away from bringing very, very, very strong, like, whether rebukes or just teachings to the churches. Um, yeah. Mm. Okay. Nice. So my question is... <laughs> This isn't, this isn't funny. <laughs> um, so most missionaries, when they go to different countries, are either going because they're teachers, so they're going to schools to teach English, or they come with like a business venture to help the community that they're going into. So what was it like for you guys? Did you guys go with like, hey, we're going to teach in a school, or we have a business plan, or whatever it is, to spread the gospel? Or was it guys you guys just kind of went over and... Just started started. sharing. Um, Yeah, in Mozambique, it's a very open nation. Um, So most people who go over into missions and they do business venture or teach or something, they're going over there to kind of cover up what they're actually doing. Um, And so within Mozambique, uh, it's a very open country. Mm. And so we don't. It's actually illegal for me to make money like start a business I don't even know if I could oversee a business that was making money I could certainly help somebody start a business Mm -hmm. um which we've tried to do and it has not been successful (laughs) Uh, it's just it's difficult uh you give a somebody a hundred dollars that's never had it before it will be gone in 10 minutes you know and so Mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a whole mind shift that you have to do so for us we just went over there and yeah just started preaching like places are very open it's really easy I talk to people like oh I want to come to Mozambique and I'm like oh, well you know I'm I don't I've never really shared I'm like you literally can walk down the street and just <laughs> like hey do you have a minute like how are you and people are open like their yards mm. are open for you to go and sit with them if I went to any pastor and was like I want to sh- speak in your church is that okay they would be like yes come Mm -hmm. um which is also kind of a difficult thing like it's amazing because it's very open but people are very open to anything that you say Mm. and so which means they're open to anything anybody yes they're easily (laughs) persuaded Mm -hmm. um and so that's why discipleship is so important um Mm -hmm. and relationship like you know making sure that the ones that we are that we have in our realm or sphere of uh, influence are Mm -hmm. being cared for because there's a lot of like African prophets and, Mm. you know, like apostle prophet, whatever, 16 names before their name, (laughs) people that come in and like are steering people away from the truth because Mm. it's, that's just what the enemy does. But mm-hmm. it's very easy for us to share the gospel. We don't have to. And I have people all the time ask me, like, you teach me English? I'm like, I don't teach you English. <laughs> I don't teach anybody English. Like, <laughs> trust me, I don't want to teach you English. And so that is not my, like, jam. But yeah. uh, we have had missionaries come in that, like, mm-hmm. they're that's part of discipleship is, yeah, let's start an English class and then spending time with the mm-hmm you know, the youth or whatever and discipling them, but it's easy for us over there. 
Well, can you tell us about um, how our listeners can connect with your ministry Mm -hmm. and um, stay in touch with you? Yes. I can. <laughs> um, so Eric and I, my husband and I, we started a nonprofit last year, 2020, actually. I don't remember what year it was. It's called As You Go Global Ministries. Um, and you can find our website at As You Go Global Ministries, sorry, at AYGMinistries.org. AYGMinistries.org. Um, and you can see what we're doing on there. It'll actually give some descriptions of like how we um, do our discipleship and evangelism and deliverance and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, social media. It's also as you go. Um, that's how you can connect with us. We are affiliated with Iris Global, uh, which is a ministry run by Heidi and Roland Baker. And so we're serving in Dondo, Mozambique, running one of their centers there in the center of the country. Um, they also have... Facebook is better for that. Iris Dondo. Um, that's how you can follow what we're doing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing so openly yes. with us yes. today. Um, I think we all learned a lot and mm-hmm. just gives us a lot to think about. And, um, and yeah, j- thank you for what you give to the world. Yes. Um, we appreciate it. And I know that the Lord does too. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it a whole bunch. Thank you for listening to the She Is Podcast by Refuge City Church. We hope you have been empowered and equipped to walk out your God-given identity. If you don't know Him or want to have a closer relationship with God, pray this with me. Jesus, I realize that I need a Savior. I invite you to come and wash me from my sin. Help me to walk in the authority you paid for through your sacrifice on the cross. I choose to trust you and obey your leading as I share what I have learned with others. In your name, amen. If you prayed that today, we would love to hear from you and celebrate. You can stay connected with us by following us on Facebook and Instagram or by emailing. The links are in the show notes. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast so you never have to miss an episode. Until next time, we pray that you would increase in the knowledge and grace of the Holy Spirit working inside you.